Nurture and support begins in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Nurture and Support. I am once again Mel at Karmic9 on Twitter, and we have a special guest for you this week. But before that, as always, over there is Kelly. Hey, everybody. It's Kelly Tool at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter. And back to Mel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I didn't know it was coming back to me. All right, all right. We have a special guest with us from Australia. See, Kelly's working really hard on getting his Australian Twitter follower count up. So he has convinced. I think Rachel. you're lying on me. Oh, my God. <laughs> we are. We are, definitely. He has convinced Miss Rachel Rigda to join us tonight. And... Do you want to take it over, Kelly, or are we turning it straight over to Rachel? Well, yeah. well, Rachel, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Let, you know, if you don't mind letting folks know your Twitter handle, and then I have a question for you. Oh, okay. Crap. I don't even know what that is. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel. <laughs> um, um, luckily, luckily, my name is not very popular, so um, I know it's rigged. <laughs> oh, yeah. here, here we go. God, I'm just, I'm just really bright today. <laughs> Um, I don't know what happened when I travelled, but I, I totally confused myself. Yeah, it's just at RS Rigda. R I G for goat, D for dog, A for apple. Don't do it the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what everyone does. I don't, I'm not sure what that's about, but um, yeah, anyway. Best <laughs> I get some really weird spellings. <laughs> Best Twitter handle spelling ever. Uh, cool. So you mentioned you mentioned Rachel. You were you were uh, traveling uh, recently, and that was before we get started on the recommendations. If if you don't mind, kind of sharing with the folks that listen to us, uh, you you actually traveled to Dubai, right? I did. I did. I traveled. Well, I traveled through Dubai, um, which is very hot and steamy. Um, yeah. So glad I wasn't there too long. But um, they haven't invented air conditioners yet, apparently. <laughs> And, uh, um, you know, Australia is really good when it's hot for that. <laughs> but so that was a bit of a shock. But, yeah, through Dubai to Vienna, Austria, which is just lovely. Very and, nice. And what were you doing there? What was I doing? Well, I was presenting um, the latest batch of research that I did in my department, which is cool. So it was its first little snippet of publication. So the year-long research project that we're doing um, on some groundbreaking new physiological research, which is cool. Are you wow. making cyborgs? Oh, uh, yeah, seriously, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to work out how I can get grant funding for a 3D printer, <laughs> just so I can make stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, if if you figure that out, let us know because we've been talking about that too. How we could possibly come up with, um, you know, a GoFundMe so Mel and Kelly can get a 3D printer. <laughs> Maybe. Actually, you know, you know, at our last Science and Information Technology Center, um, it's like a, a show type thing, um, convention that I went down to. They're about um, very between three and six hundred now, so they're not that expensive. Yeah, they're so coming it's doable. Down. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's doable. I want one. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't know what I would Actually, do with one. <laughs> oh, look, oh, anything, absolutely anything. And oh, wait, hang on. Can you see? That's it's a, a TARDIS. Oh. <laughs> Is that a 3D printed part? That's, that, that's what I brought there. <laughs> so this that's guy was making those. Like, so that's really cool. So this is what you can get now. So I so cool. want one to print out stuff. <laughs> My yes. little Stargate Atlantis figurines. <laughs> a Stargate. <laughs> yes, a Stargate would be totally cool. Absolutely. Well, it's totally doable now because you can actually have a 3D printer that does jewelry. So if they've got materials like that, it's not too far away, people. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm always thinking of a way to do it. <laughs> I mean, make a target. <laughs> yes, sign me up. I want one. And you can just download all of those, uh, all the instructions that just tell the printer what to do now, and you don't have to do anything. Absolutely. It's great. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I should recommend that. Go follow the three D printing guys on Twitter. They're awesome. They come up with cool crap. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. So, are we ready to get started with recommendations? Sounds like a plan. Okay. Um, so it's it's my turn to start first. 
And um, if you are listening to us because you're a fan of the Snark Elk Group or you're a member of the Snark Elk Group on Twitter, you'll be familiar with my recommendation this week. But this movie just came to Netflix recently. I know Kelly has seen it. I don't know if you have, Rachel, but it's called Big Ass Spider. <laughs> oh, no. I haven't even heard of that one. Okay. Where's well, my, where's I, my pen? <laughs> I don't know if it's available um, on your Netflix, but it just hit U.S. Netflix earlier in the week, and it stars Greg Grunberg, who everybody should love if they don't, and um, Ray Weiss is in it as well, and... Let me see who played Jose. Lombardo Boyer played Jose. Big Ass Spider is the story of an exterminator who gets mixed up in a military experiment and has to hunt, exactly as the title says, a big ass spider. And we're talking about a spider that eventually gets, I would say, bigger than King Kong on the top of that (laughs) bank building at the end of the movie. But this movie pretty much has one of the best openings of any sci-fi movie ever. It opens up in the middle of of Greg Grunberg, exterminator extraordinaire, waking up and walking in slow motion down this street filled with smoke and chaos and screaming people in slow motion running while this slow song is playing in the background. And eventually he looks up. And there's this huge freaking spider on top of this building and is attacking helicopters, as happens in every movie on the Sci-Fi Channel. And it was just glorious. It was glorious. And then the movie starts with 12 hours prior to that. And you get all of the lead-up to that monumental moment. So this movie's so much fun. I, I just love it. It's one of my favorite movies to come on Sci-Fi Channel in a long time. What did you think about it, Kelly? I loved it. It is, Rachel, and you should definitely check, but Australia, because we forgot to mention when the show started, you know, so Rachel's got this background, but she does live in Australia, so that means she lives in the future, and so she's already in the future. Uh, so, you leak everything after you. Figure that one out. <laughs> it's a time warp, baby. It is, it is. We like to confuse people. <laughs> it works, and... and yeah, and it confuses me a lot, but I'm pretty proud of myself that, that I actually was able to figure out this time that when Rachel was going to be here, we were going to be here. So, But, no, Mel, I loved I loved the movie. Um, you know, the director uh, had, um, I mean, he was pretty purposeful about saying, hey, I'm going to make, he knew what people liked on these kind of bad B-movie, mm-hmm. uh, I don't say bad, but just that kind of when it's a little more tongue-in-cheek and it's a little more right. fun. And he knew the the kind of notes that people like to see and the kind of kind of humor and and he just executed it flawlessly in terms of you know so it's not the most realistic CGI in the world but it's not embarrassing there's a lots of clever I it was lines. pretty good I I I I I liked it and and it tells what happens when you actually put in a couple actors who can deliver and right. and do a good job but yeah so I loved it I loved Jose is the kind of sidekick in the show and he uh and he was very active on Twitter the night that the show uh was airing he was. Uh, very interactive very cool uh he so was. it was it was fun so I I liked it quite a bit I highly recommend Rachel big ass spider you need to <laughs> do some searches there Is it yes is it a girl spider or a boy spider does it ever have a baby Oh, that's cool. what they're, they're trying to stop. <laughs> yeah, they're they're trying to stop her from reproducing, but it is a very yeah. large black widow esque, huge King Kong sized gorilla. I mean, spider that ends up <laughs> on top of a building like King Kong. It was great. Now, <laughs> now there's a quote from the movie that pretty much sums up to me the whole movie, and it's and it, it was uh, Greg Grunberg's character says, the girl of my dreams and a big spider want to kill me on my day off. And that pretty much sums up the whole movie. All of this is happening on this poor exterminator's day off. He has to start the day with some crazy client who calls him all of the time and pays him in fruitcake on his day off to shut her up. And he gets bit by a brown recluse and ends up in the hospital having to get it treated at just the exact moment 
that a body is mistakenly taken to that hospital's morgue and this spider chews its way out of him. And yeah. there you go. <laughs> the it must next, have been a Monday. <laughs> it, it was, probably. And the rest of the story is, is just pure gold. Jose is a security guard in the hospital. And this is such a buddy movie. Um, Alex, that's Greg Grunberg's character, and Jose are the best pair uh, that I've seen on screen in, in a comedy like that in a very long time. They just, they went so well together. It, it was awesome. Given that I'm in Texas, one of my favorite <laughs> quotes from the movie is when Alex tells Jose, who's, who's rattling on while they're driving down in the truck, your Spanglish is pressuring me. <laughs> And and being in Texas, this is something that I I feel deeply. I really sympathized with him there because I have this problem on a daily basis. So I recommend Big Ass Spider. It's available on Netflix right now. So if you have a Netflix account, you can get on there and you can watch this glorious, glorious ode to science fiction, bad monster movies as much as you want. And this will air still in October, so consider it a Halloween gift. Everyone should watch it. I love it. it it's really great. And I should mention that uh, Patrick Bouchot, I believe is how you say his last name, is also plays a scientist in this movie, and he is awesome in everything that he does. But Ray Weiss does a great job. Ray Weiss is great in everything that he is, and this, this movie had a great cast. It was loads of fun, and because they had quite a few actors in here that were from other um, fandoms, they were throwing in quite a few tongue-in-cheek little little quotes for them that if you had watched their previous work, you caught and could go, hee hee, I know what they're talking about there, and that always makes us little geeks happy. So um, Mike <laughs> Mendez was the director of this movie and they really they really hit it out of the park they did a great job with uh, making a fans movie for for a monster movie that we all love so it was one of my favorite ones and I just wanted to let everybody know that it is out there on Netflix right now so you don't have to pay anything extra like you usually do for most of my recommendations so there we'll put we'll put that one on the list of Melissa's giving you another pseudo free recommendation. It doesn't happen very often. It's a good one though. It was yeah, fun, maybe. Can I, yeah, you need to can find I, can I ask you a question? Can sure. I ask you a question because I haven't seen it, you two? What what was your rating on the spider? Did you know usually they look the they oh, whatever creature it is just looks so ridiculous. Like, so what's I, your rating out of ten on the spider look? I thought they did a really good job, especially as the spider when it was really huge. I thought the CGI in this movie was actually pretty good for the budget. I, honestly, yeah. I, I kind of felt like this movie, I would have gone to the theater to see this movie. And I don't say that lightly because I think, I think movies at the theater are just way too overpriced. I mean, $12 for a matinee, that's ridiculous. But um, I would have I well, well, thought. We, we've got 19 is our minimum. <laughs> 19 <laughs> to about 25 a movie for us here. Oh, so wow. It's pretty expensive, yeah. Right, and so, so I don't see I, I don't see a lot of movies at the theater anymore. Um, I have to really be geeking out about a movie to go to the theater for it. And this one, I would have gone. I would actually go right now after having seen this movie several times. If they wanted to put it up on the big screen, I would pay actual more money to go watch this in the theater. That's how much I like this movie. So what number would you put? What, what What's your spider I would, rating? I would give that spider... I'd give that spider a good nine. I thought he was pretty good. <laughs> I, That's so I'd be pretty cool. good. That's pretty good. I, I would at least be eight uh, in terms of, uh, because it is, in a lot of these movies, like a really good example is um, Mega Piranha, uh, where uh, the, oh, yeah. the Piranhas and Mega Piranha drastically change their size ratio <laughs> from scene to scene. Sometimes they're the size of a bus. Other times they're the size of a of a bicycle, mm -hmm. and they just they kind of grow and train. The same the same piranha changes sizes depending on uh, what they do, and they yeah. look pretty cheesy. This one, the the CGI at Tamil's point a little bit earlier, the CGI was 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 pretty pretty solid, and uh, I mean it was. Uh, 
it was pretty pretty realistic. Well, as realistic as a gigantic spider on climbing a skyscraper can be. But the, the but yeah, spider it, itself was pretty good. The the web shooting, it spitting webs at and uh, acid or poison at people that could have been improved. But the spider alone, looking at the spider, I thought the spider was good. Okay. Especially at the end. Actually, actually, Sharknado was really bad for the uh, changing of the shark size. You know, like it, it'd be massive, and then when he was fending it off in the house, it looked like it was about two, you know, two little lengths long. <laughs> like, that was really funny because um, we know they're really huge. <laughs> yeah. So not good. Cool. So that's what all I've got. Big ass spider. Everybody should run <laughs> off and go watch it right now, right. and hit yeah. pause and come back. I will. <laughs> yeah, after you're, done, after you're done listening to this fascinating show, because, because next up, Mel, <laughs> don't send the people away, Mitch. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come back, everyone. Come back. Yeah, they're, all, okay, they're all sitting back down. Okay, good. Now everybody's back. We're going to hand it over to Rachel and uh, have her give her recommendation. So, Rachel, whenever you are ready. Oh, okay. Well, because you didn't tell me how to do a movie, so well, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a flashback to one of my all time favorites, which is called The Wasp Woman, and it came out in uh, let me see 1959, and it was in the budget bin for like two dollars, but it is probably one of the best old science fiction movies I've ever seen. The acting was really good. They had you probably wouldn't know these people, but there was Susan Cabot. Anthony Isley, Michael Mark, and I think that's meant to be Barbara Morris. <laughs> um, but basically, uh, you know, I guess it's like any of the other ones. It's, you know, you've got an amalgamation of this lady who turns into a wasp and she goes and hunts people. But um, that's pretty much the storyline. <laughs> I sort of can't elaborate anymore. But it is just for its time done really, really well. I really, really liked it. And, of course, they're in a, a science lab, so I love that. that. That sort of appeals to me as does all these science shows. But, uh, yeah, and, and it has the obvious ending, I guess. But, yeah, if you haven't ever checked it out and you like old retro sci-fi, you've got to watch it. It's really good. I need to watch it again. It's also, I... it's also called The Bee Girl and Insect Woman, so I don't know if it's a different name where you guys are because they do that sometimes. But um, in Australia, it was The Wasp Woman. <laughs> I think it's called The Wasp Woman here, too. I think okay. so. Cause I know that I've seen it before, but I, it's been so long. I need to see it again. Yeah, it's it's a really cool movie. I, I if I if I'm in one of those moods where I just want to watch a science fiction one that I haven't seen for a while, that's the one I pull out, and it you know never disappoints. It's good. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. So, um, so so Rachel, for movies like that, uh, and and for this one here, what what's what is the part that um that makes makes you like it the most? Is it is it the is it the storyline? Is it the performance of the actors? Is it the the special or not so special effects, or just does it depend? Well, I think that's the thing because in a lot of the old science fiction stuff or the old Twilight movies, it's really more about the acting because they don't have <laughs> a lot of um, you know special effects like we do now. So I, I tend to feel that the acting is better. It's more genuine. It, it, it tends to be, if unless they're doing theatrical stuff, you know, if they have a fight scene, it's always this choreography. And I, I think that in itself is beautiful. I love watching some of the... Um, fight scenes because they're just like a dance routine. It is quite um, amazing <laughs> um, that they go to sort of uh, that sort of length. But you can almost tell that they're not really hitting each other. So, um, but, you know, it's just like a, a different time. You know, the women had yellow teeth if it's in colour. Um, it, it just, it's just interesting to see um, the difference. But the thing that I like the most is just seeing where their vision is in 59 and what we have and know now and how close they were um, to getting it. And sometimes they really nail the science on the head, sort of, so to speak. But And that's what I like. I, I like their prediction and how close they get um, or how far they get because sometimes it's quite comical to think, um, you know, where their line of thought has gone. Um, but, yeah, it's um, a lot of the times in the Twilight ones, they were just brilliant. Like their, their science back then knowledge, I guess, was pretty cool. Um, and, and they got pretty close to a lot of stuff, like the cloning techniques and that. So I, I think that's what impresses me the most besides the, the acting <laughs> and they just seem more genuine it's hard to explain but they've just got this genuineness about them uh, and I think that just comes from the era that they were um, coming from and, and they tend to have a bit of um, 
Uh, it's, it's sort of like a more romantic type of acting. I guess very classy, I guess, is, is what you can say, <laughs> as opposed to, fuck this, there's an animal coming. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, <laughs> you know, I think the dialogue tends to be a little bit more intricate and detailed, and I like that. <laughs> sure that they weren't allowed to say all of those things, so they had to come up with other ways to say it. <laughs> we just exactly so. point now. <laughs> so the F word 12 times in a row doesn't appear, which I guess, you know, you get a whole sentence of um, words in there. <laughs> right, right. So it's good. A little bit more detail. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I have to say, I, I, I do have, still have to complain on an almost daily basis that we don't have um, flying cars and yeah. transporters. Every morning, I regret that we have not found a transporter technology yet because, God, traffic is a bitch. <laughs> so, speaking of how close yeah, well, the old movies get to our, our future technology here, where is my transporter? The oh, wow. flying cars are real, though. Google that. They're out there. I saw something recently about that, but I didn't yeah. read the article, so yeah, I'll have yeah, to. Yeah, I've seen it on. probably the last two or three years that there, there's been types out there that different sorts, but um, yeah, someone made a joke about Paris Hilton trying to fly one. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, probably because you'd be the only one who can afford one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I can promise you I won't be the first person to try the transporter. Uh, no, not with a fly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, let them work the kinks out first. I think it's a good plan. Yeah, yeah, I have a few people I'd like to throw in to see if they make it through first. I'm going to make a list. Well, <laughs> I think we all have those lists, don't we? We do. Some of us have more than one. That's Speaking right. of Kelly and lists. I keep multiple lists. Of, 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 I'd be able to sequence these folks, uh, and there would be a lot of them. Uh, so this is what, what's really awesome, Rachel, as a guest, is that she she gave a recommendation from a movie from 1959, so I'll make <laughs> you feel better, because many many of my recommendations <laughs> are, are a little more, as this one's going to be, too. But... They are uh, they will be a little bit on the older side, so that was cool. But yeah, so I have actually I'm not so Mel. I, was, I think you must have seen you've seen uh, Wasp Woman then. Yes, I'm I'm almost absolutely positive I've seen Wasp Woman, um, but it's been a very long time ago. I think I, I think I was a kid and watched it with my grandmother, so I need to see it again. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. <laughs> It's old. <laughs> I was not alive in 1959, everyone. Just, just so that we can be clear, I was a. I'm not sure that my mother was alive in 1959. I'm not that old. No matter what Kelly tells you. I do know, but uh, so cool. All righty. Well, I'll go ahead and my my recommend. And this was for Rachel because I had this recommendation ready last show. I wanted to use it because I was all excited about using it. But then as I got ready for it, I saw there's a little bit of an Australian touch tied to it. And I was like, well, I got to see this, this show for Rachel. So um, so my question to you, and these these uh, shows or radio stations, those types of things, uh, this is probably more in the late 70s, early 80s. So I uh, what read you have. But uh, are you familiar either with a radio station out of Sydney called 2JJ or Triple J? Each Triple J. That, that's a, um, around Australia. We have it everywhere. That okay. One. Triple J from yeah. Earth. How about a television show called Countdown? Yeah. Everyone knows Countdown. <laughs> well, I didn't know Countdown. <laughs> yeah, you're well, not Australian. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But, you know, but you're talking to the Australians for me to say I'm a good guy to follow on Twitter, right, Rachel? Because you need to yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My numbers are weak. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, so anyway, I'm recommending uh, an album by a band. The band is XTC, the letters XTC, yeah. and the name of the uh, it's their third album released in 1979, because that's kind of how I roll, is these older uh, recommendations. Uh, it was called Drums and Wires. And this will probably not be my last XTC recommendation, uh, but I wanted to kind of do this one. And then as I was getting ready, I was like, they kind of, as they, they started in 1976, and one of the first places they began to have success was Australia. Uh, right. They were very popular in Australia, and it was because of Triple J and Countdown yeah. that was showing some of their early, early stuff. And so that kind of gave them their kick start. And they did a couple of very successful tours down there. Now, XTC currently is no, it's no longer going concern right now. 
the two main proponents over the two main uh, actors in it are Andy Partridge and Colin Moulding. Uh, and, but from 1976 to about 2005, they were creating really, really awesome stuff. Uh, they uh, used to also tour to support, uh, to support them, but they stopped touring in 1982. Uh, and so okay. really for the vast majority of the, the tail part of their career, there was no touring to support any of what they were doing because uh, Andy Partridge, um, apparently since a child, has uh, been prescribed Valium and uh, has fairly severe stage fright. And his wife uh, at the time uh, inexplicably uh, decided that it's time to wean him off. And by weaning him off of Valium, she threw it all away the night before a show. And he just had a complete fry out. Um, and uh, so that was the end of touring for XTC. So then he just got um, some uh, albums from there on out from there, but tremendously good albums. Um, are either of you familiar with them at all? I was going to no. say the, the only mm. XTC album I have is Wasp Star, which goes with Rachel's Wasp mm. Woman recommendation. <laughs> it's Kiss <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I am. I have Wasp Star. That okay, was one which, of their their one. last albums. Yeah. Yes, I enjoyed it. You familiar at all, Rachel? I'm really bad with um, any sort of name on on radio. So if I heard a song, I'd be more likely to tell you if I know them. But just from their name, no, it doesn't ring a bell. But I was only born in '75, so um, yeah. It's <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> really? Okay. No, I guess because I, I, I teach dancing and I used to do dance, so my music tends to be more modern, so it's something I can dance to. So if it's, And Triple J generally is our alternative um, type music, so anything that's a little bit left of the centre um, does really well in the tri Triple J type um, sphere. So, um, yeah, and what sort of music was it? Well, so that's a, but, uh, we're going to kind of step you through that, and we're going to get back to this dancing smarty pants because there's some dancing <laughs> stuff in here, so there's another tie coming our way. Um, so, so to describe XTC uh, musically, uh, what we need to start with is kind of assume you have like a dowel rod or kind of a long wooden stick, and it's a continuum. And then you take a rubber band, you cut it, and you tape one end of the rubber band to one end and one end to the other. So it's kind of like you got a little bow and arrow. And so XTC's musical style is kind of the continuum of that dowel rod. On one end, it's Captain Beefheart, who's another guy I've recommended before. <laughs> Delta Beauty, highly dissident music, very, uh, very hyper experimental, jangly guitars. No sense of rhythm, no no kind of four four rhythm, very snaky uh, guitars and drums and all that. And then on the other end of this pencil or this this rod, we have the Beatles. And basically, Ooh, XTC's like entire Beatles. their entire <laughs> career is this path, kind of like on Breaking Bad, where it was you know going from Mr. Chips to to Scarface. XTC went from Captain Beefheart to the Beatles. It's pretty much the way that they're doing as, as, And it was always a mix of both, and, but as they got later and later, so like when you get to Wasp Star, uh, Mel, and some of those, that's much much heavier on the Beatles, a little less on the Beefheart. Uh, okay. But then we got our rubber band I talked about, because what also happens is there's other musical influences that come in, and so to plot where they're at, you kind of pull that rubber band up a little bit and say, this is... Halfway between Beefheart and the Beatles, but a little bit of Rolling Stones or a little bit of Devo or those types of things there. So that's XTC's music. That's how I describe it. But I, just, of, I just got a visual image of someone getting a really bad wedgie, right? <laughs> a Devo, a Devo getting a wedgie. Yeah, yeah that would be that's good. an image. But um, <laughs> originally, uh, one of the working names for XTC was the Helium Kids. Which would have been actually a pretty pretty cool name, but I, li I like that. I like that. So in '79, they'd had two albums out already. Drums and Wires came out. They still have a lot of beef art uh, influence to it, and they had their first hit on it, which was probably thanks to Triple J, uh, making plans for Nigel. Uh, and so that actually leaves the album off, and it's a really uh, a really good song. And then it's okay. followed by a song that that I defy you to listen to and not be happy. <laughs> it's a song called Helicopter. Uh, so this ties back to your recommendation earlier, Mel. So now we get helicopters yes. in here. Um, yeah, I know a lot of the older XTCs. I just don't have their albums. Yeah. Yep, and it's like you know, it's basically you know, she's a laughing, giggling, whirly bird is kind of the lyric of it, and then uh, she's like a helicopter, copter, 
And I didn't think the song could get any better or any more enjoyable. Uh, and then I wanted to look for the show to see if I could find a YouTube video to um, uh, include in our blog post on the show to kind of give an example and everybody hear how incredibly awesome Helicopter is as a song. And there's this, and I'll get you the link well for the post, but there's this tremendous video that someone took to the, the studio track Helicopter, and it's all these shots of old helicopters or old attempts at helicopters, and helicopters not doing a particularly good job at landing, uh, <laughs> interspliced with uh, the, all of the dancing from the Breakfast Club. So <laughs> all, the, all the kids that were dancing, and, and I mean, if you recall from that, there's some times where they're spinning around like uh -huh. a helicopter, and yeah. so they just kind of speed it up like that. And it actually added a lot. It was pretty cool to see this little video. So like I said, Helicopter is just a tremendously funny, uh, funny song. There's also a song on it called... Uh, when you're when you're not near me, I have difficulty, and this and this song covers a lot of difficulties they have. Like so when you're when you're not near me, I have difficulty respirating, concentrating, standing upright, sleeping at night, and it just kind of repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. Yeah. And so it's a pretty pretty fun song too. Roads that girdle the globe uh, is remember that continuum of beef heart to the to the Beatles. That's that's they're saying, hey, we're still like this beef heart guy because it's got a lot of the Captain Beefheart snaky guitars and bass and and those types of thing. That's really really fun. And then uh, one of the other songs is called Life Begins at the Hop. Imagine again another little peppy dance number where you took under my the kind of the guitar line from under my thumb. So this is kind of the Rolling Stones or the rubber band part here, and you pull up and you got a bit of a Rolling Stones feel uh, to it of under the part of the guitar from under my thumb weaving its way through this this little dance number. A song called Limelight, which has got a lot of Devo influence to it, and uh, a song called Scissor Man. Now, Mel, what group do you possibly think Scissor Man might sound like? Scissor Man. I'm thinking Beatles. That would be, sounds to me like that would be more like Beatles. Be a companion piece to Particle Man. They might be, oh, they, they well, might be giants. Yeah, true, true. And then cool. um, the other, the, other uh, so the most recent release of this album includes three kind of bonus tracks um, on it, which Life Begins at the Hop is one of those. Uh, and then there's a, a song called Outside World, uh, which uh, has a repeating chorus of, she had six songs singing in a sauna, and that's the big lyric of it from there. So they're just, it's very kind of creative lyrically. It's good music. It's got a little bit of experimental alternative sound to it. And then basically as XTC moved along, uh, people were starting to say, well, they're kind of sounding like the Beatles. And they basically started to, with a, uh, they're very, they could do a lot of harmonies really well together, had some of the kind of complex structures of some of the later Beatle work. Uh, and uh, so you get to songs like, albums like Mummer by XTC, and that's, pretty much a Beatles album uh, yeah. uh, sung by uh, by these guys. So uh, Drums and Wires, probably the first of several XTC recommendations. Listen to Helicopter and you'll be happy. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, be sure to include the video. I'm dying to see that video. <laughs> I love, I'm a huge history buff. I love, there's been a few um, film clips like that where they look at old um, flying machines and stuff. And that, that stuff back fascinates me to know and so it's, it's, it's always hilarious watching um, what they actually thought would work <laughs> and what works and stuff but I mean even just the, the history of flying is amazing so I, lo I love those old old pictures it's great. Yeah. yeah well you'll get there'll be a couple particularly early in the video of uh, some really bad ideas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really well, especially when they speed it up it always looks hilarious. <laughs> They did a, yeah, they did a great. This wasn't the official video. Somebody just put this together, and they did a, a nice job. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll um, and uh, include that link, and you'll join. So that's that's my recommendation for today. I'm really surprised that there wasn't. I I was expecting someone to have made a cartoon version for that video. That's a great. That's a great song. I do know that song. It's it's very happy, very it's fun. Very, it's just, it just can't stop. Very danceable yeah. too, Rachel. Very danceable. Danceable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so I guess that brings us to social media recommendations. Uh, I'm going to stick with my theme this week. My social media recommendation is from Twitter, and it is for the director of Big Ass Spider, Mr. Mike Mendez. His Twitter handle is at Madman Mendez, and um, like he is very supportive 
of, of course, Big Ass Spider. Um, but he is also very interactive with anybody who wants to talk to him about that movie. And as I say repeatedly, I'm always a big fan of creators like this who take the time to uh, take a moment to acknowledge their fans on Twitter. It's always a big plus in my book. And he is um, a lot of fun, and he'll talk to you about the movie um, pretty much any day. So go follow at Madman Mendez on Twitter, and he'll talk Big Ass Spider with you. You know, that's really, really cool. I think um, anybody who doesn't interact with their fans, I don't care what level or what sort of star you are, whether you're just like me and some little tiny fish or you're a massive person, I think you really need to connect with um, your people. Um, because if you don't, I, I personally, as on the receiving end, being a fan, I just lose interest. Like I like the ones that chuck you a bone every now and again. And, uh, and, and I think that's the way it should work, at least, you know, just something occasionally even if it's one fan a week that you say hi how are you going um i think it's just that a sort of semblance of respect it, it's a reciprocal re relationship this industry and and i think sometimes they forget that and um you know you can't expect fans to support you forever if you do nothing so you know right good on you i think that's great i love it yep, yep. we're always big fans of people actors directors creators of anything that interact with us on twitter because you know yeah absolutely Absolutely. Cool. Well, if I ever make it big, <laughs> I'll still come back and do this you'll, show. You'll You're still wrong. talk to us. <laughs> I will still talk to you until I'm dead. <laughs> we, briefly. Good. <laughs> It'll be short. Yeah. Once just... a week, she'll throw us a bone, y'all. You know, once I start talking, I'm better be the whole hour. <laughs> I can't say anything in a minute. <laughs> That's cool. I don't have that skill at all. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what my boss says? She always says to new people, she goes, if you can't find Rachel, just close your eyes and listen, <laughs> and eventually you'll hear me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the reputation I have at work. <laughs> well, that is that is not bad. There are far, far, far worse things. In fact, they call no, me that at my work yeah. every day. <laughs> Well, at least in my industry, it's a bonus, you know. I mean, you've got to talk to your volunteers that come in and study, so, right. you know, um, it works both ways. Absolutely. So, so, Rachel, do you have a social media recommendation for us? Oh, man, one. Geez, that's hard, hey. Um, look, I think if you want something a little bit alternative, like I also have a psychology background, so I... I Sometimes, you know, it's nice that people put up all these little sayings and, and stuff, and I, I think they're really good. But there's a group on YouTube called um, Soul Pancake, and they always have, like, these feel-goods, you know, either how to be happy or, um, you know, overcoming cancer or something like that. But they're, they're just like a feel-good um, bunch of people who it's sort of try to help other people, which I just love that, I, I you know. And sometimes, you know, I guess, um, people don't have access to books or maybe it doesn't interest them and, and things like that but they just have a really cool way of doing stuff um, and uh, yeah so check them out I, I really like them like you know if you're ever having a bit of a poo moment you know they're great to look at some of their stuff and <laughs> you know um, they, they always make me happy it's good and they do have one on happiness so um, but it, it's really good I think from my background what they seem to put out there is quite useful so yeah if you like that sort of stuff give them a check out it sounds like something that Kelly and I might both need to watch <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be right back. Yeah, you always, get, you always need a balance. Hmm. I no, might need we, to check that out or put that on repeat tomorrow at work. Yeah, I'll be subscribing. I can definitely use a dose of that. But you know what would make it better? Them playing helicopter behind every one of their settings. Exactly, exactly. Happiness overload. Yes. I'm going to download that so I can listen to it as I walk to work. <laughs> yep. You'll be bouncing to work, I guarantee you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, do, I like happy songs on my way to work. Yeah, it's a cool one. Alrighty, well, I'll finish it up with my social media recommendation. And um, my uh, 
as we have established in past shows, uh, I'm, I'm more of a, a picture guy. <laughs> when, when, if I don't have to read something, if it can be made simple for me and I can look at something, and that works, at, uh, I like simple. Uh, so I, I love a lot of these Twitter accounts that tweet out, you know, uh, pictures of um, abandoned places or uh, people who've made mistakes. Uh, this one here is called Perfect Timed Photos. The actual Twitter handle is at... Uh, Damn Life Picks, D A M N L I F E P I C S. So Damn Life Picks, but it's perfect time photos, and it is exactly what it says. It's someone taking a photo at that perfect moment to make something pretty amus uh, amusing. And so whether it's a, a bear and a, uh, uh, a on like a waterfall and a fish jumping, or a balloon hitting somebody's face, or all sorts of different things. Uh, uh, just perfectly timed photos is really really funny. Um, there's a bunch of those accounts out there. This one consistently has I think some of the best photos, and it also they also do videos as well. So there's like uh, one of their more recent posts is a bullet passing its way through a soap bubble. So uh, yeah. done in really slow speed. So it's just kind of some of those types of things. So it's just a little bit of eye candy, kind of kind of fun to look at. So it's called Perfect Time Photos at uh, at Damn Life Picks on Twitter, and uh, I'd recommend you give them a follow. You get a kind of a cool cool photo every once in a while. I do follow them too. They 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 um they seem to satisfy my sadistic nature. <laughs> I think, I think they had one recently of that kid who had a, a can of something in the lighter and he had it the wrong way and it went straight to his face. <laughs> oh, idiot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, <laughs> so on my science, you, you know, side, I quite like those experiments that go awfully wrong. <laughs> yes, we're digressing yeah. from the happiness vibe here, though. <laughs> but. But I, that's I'm like a dodecahedron, you know, there's one side of everything to me. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I approve. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So that was good. That was fun. Yeah, it was and great. And I think, unless anybody has anything else to add, that would, that would take us to Matt taking us out. Are we so done? Good. Yep, just outside okay. of Rachel. Thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. Oh, you're very welcome. Anytime, my pleasure. <laughs> and everybody, don't forget to go, if you don't, follow Rachel at RSRigda on Twitter. And we will be back next week with another episode. And here is Matt once again to tell you how to get in touch with us. Thanks, everybody. You can contact us on our website, nurtureandsupport.net, or email us at nurtandsup at gmail.com. That's N-U-R-T-A-N-D-S-U-P-P at gmail.com. Or tweet us at Nerd and Sup on Twitter. Nerd and Sup.